What's up, A to Z Sports? Live on a Wednesday, going to have a big time show because mock draft chaos is ensuing with the news of the Vikings trade last week. New mock drafts come out early this week, reflecting maybe some new information the NFL experts are hearing, the NFL draft experts are hearing about the implications of the Vikings trade and how that directly impacts the Tennessee Titans. And uh, honestly, uh, might have this NFL draft that's felt kind of chalky uh, for a lot of the, the pre-draft process. Uh, but man, now it feels like we're going to have a lot of fun with a lot of unpredictable trade potential at the top of the draft and how that uh, does impact the Tennessee Titans at seventh overall. So going to have a great show talking through that. Uh, I've also got uh, what I think is a very likely Titans trade scenario in the NFL draft. And we'll talk through uh, what those could be. And Sam, it's been a while since you've been on here for a sports trivia Wednesday. I feel like it's been a lot of Jack running the trivia controls the last couple of weeks, but uh, Wednesday uh, we wrap up the show with sports trivia. Hopefully we can get a clean record and get out of here on a Wednesday with trivia, but welcome in. Let's get this thing rolling. Hey, let's do it here. Uh, like you said, got a loaded show because mock draft season is a lot of chaos and a lot of fun, but especially when you're starting to talk trades and a recent scenario that we are going to go over that I think Titans fans are going to be either excited or furious about one way or the other. So it's going to be a great show. A lot of great conversations to get into this morning. And before we dive into all of it, those of you watching need to share the show. So if you're watching on Facebook, hit the share button in the bottom right. If you're watching on YouTube, take the YouTube link, share that around. That can be on your Facebook timeline. That can be on Twitter X. That can be in a group chat by texting it over to somebody or just letting them know, hey, A to Z Sports is live right now. You got to join the conversation. Introduce people to the A to Z Sports family. That's the best way to support us. Don't forget to like the show as well as some of you are already pointing out in the comments. Uh, good on you guys for doing that. Uh, before we dive into it and kick things off here on a Wednesday morning. Yep, let's do it officially. Welcome into A to Z Sports, powered as always by the BetMGM app. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Sam Phelan, our Titans reporter for A to Z Sports.com. And we are Nashville's on demand sports talk network going live weekday mornings at 8 central time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Link to the show segment by segment on our Twitter X timeline. Also hit us up on Instagram, TikTok, and threads for more great Titans content. We got to thank our sponsors because they make it happen for us. And they help out all of you, like Wilson County Hyundai. Make them a part of your new car buying process. See them in Lebanon or online, WilsonCountyHyundai.com. The Bone & Joint Institute, BoneAndJointTN.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get better with Farm Bureau Health Plans at FBHP.com slash A-T-O-Z. And Krebs Kubota, an elite Kubota dealer with three great locations across the mid-state Columbia, Franklin, and Murfreesboro. They are online at KrebsKubota.com. So, Sam, uh, a lot to get to to start off here on this show today. But uh, there's been a lot of conversation uh, around the NFL draft circles. Uh, I guess it was last week. Maybe it was Thursday um, or so when uh, the Titans, or, excuse me, the Vikings made a trade uh, with the Houston Texans to have a second first round pick. And that was uh, what we think is going to be for JJ McCarthy, uh, the quarterback out of Michigan for the Vikings to be able to move up from 11th overall uh, to somewhere in the top. And I, I think uh, that's where we are trying to figure out where are the Vikings going to move from up from 11 uh, with that 23rd pick from the Texans and how does that truly impact the draft? Because it really does feel like Caleb Williams is going to be the pick for the Bears. Justin Fields is now gone in Pittsburgh, a basically giveaway trade by the Bears for a conditional six-round pick in 2025's draft. Uh, Washington is going to take a quarterback, whether it's Jaden Daniels or Drake May out of North Carolina. The Patriots, I feel like, would be incredibly dumb if they did not take a quarterback, but you never know with what the Patriots are going to do, but it feels like quarterback three could be coming off the board at third overall. And then you get into the wide receivers where Marvin Harrison Jr. has been 
the assumed selection by the Arizona Cardinals who have their quarterback in Kyler Murray at four. Then you've got the Chargers at five, the Giants at six. The Chargers have gotten rid of both of their best receivers in Mike Williams and in Keenan Allen. So they need wide receiver help. The Giants need wide receiver help perpetually and offensive line help. But could the Giants take a quarterback to compete with Daniel Jones? But they just signed who, who the, the Giants backup quarterback is, uh, Drew, is Lock. Drew Lock, right? So you've got a lot of things there. And then the Titans are sending at seven. And we know the Titans are an offensive line or wide receiver market. But Sam, like, what, how do you feel about the JJ McCarthy trade up spot? Where, like, where could the Vikings be eyeing? Because the Falcons just got Kirk Cousins at eight. So the Titans spot doesn't seem like it's as valuable. Uh, in a trade up spot because who are you trading up ahead of? Yeah. So every year in the draft, I feel like there is one player that dictates mainly the entire draft, but really that first 10 picks, right. And the domino effect that happens in that top 10 is really determined by one player. Usually it's a quarterback. And last year I would argue that it was CJ Stroud. You had rumors leading up all the way until draft day about who was going to trade up and potentially land C.J. Stroud with even teams like the Titans rumored to be in talks with the Arizona Cardinals of, hey, could they trade up to number three? And what the Texans did at two had a huge effect on the ensuing trades and therefore the ensuing picks on who was there. And really for me, J.J. McCarthy is that player in this draft because that QB4 spot uh, is very volatile at this point where realistically JJ McCarthy probably doesn't go in the top 10. Like, I don't think any of the teams in the top 10 are necessarily picking JJ McCarthy sticking and picking, but the trade up scenario makes every possibility a possibility because you never know when somebody's going to come up, get the quarterback and shift down the board a little bit. Uh, yeah. and, and for the Titans in a spot, as you mentioned, where they really have two positions of need that you're looking to address, but looking to figure out one, how to maximize value and two, how to maximize assets by potentially trading down. All of their possibilities can be changed by one team doing something aggressive with JJ McCarthy. I have seen Austin, even rumors that the commanders might take JJ McCarthy at number two, which I think would be crazy, but <laughs> And and probably is not going to happen. That's probably a rumor that's floated out there that's not actually realistic. But I have heard that they're meeting with J.J. McCarthy and flying out there to meet with him and all of this stuff. Imagine the chaos if J.J. McCarthy goes second overall. The Patriots can get Drake May at three. And now Jaden Daniels is that quarterback that's falling somewhere in that, that four to ten range and teams are looking to move up for there's a lot here. And, and so as we're going to talk about today, there, there's a reason we had to do an entire show on this today yep. because I think my opinion on what the Titans should do and my predictions about what I think the Titans would do changes in like every which way that you tweak the scenario. I think the reaction by Tennessee is something different, uh, mm -hmm. which makes it all very convoluted and intriguing to me. Yeah, for sure. And uh, get a quick shout out to Chase. He says it's 6.20 a.m. in California, and this show makes my morning so much better. We appreciate that. Let's throw some uh, cold water in the face of Chase at 6.20 in the morning by the mock draft chaos that ensued with NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah, who his Move the Sticks podcast and his NFL draft analysis is one of the best in the NFL with his connections across the league, <clears throat> what he's hearing, his evaluations and his scouting. And, but really what he's hearing uh, is most important here in uh, sifting through all of it. So Daniel Jeremiah released his updated mock draft uh, yesterday morning. And this goes with the implications of the Vikings trading for the Texans for the 23rd overall pick. Now the Vikings have 11 and 23 in the first round. How can they package those together to move up uh, for J.J. McCarthy? And Daniel Jeremiah has two big trades in the top five. So, Chase, here is that cold water we're throwing right there in your face uh, to wake you up at 6.23 in the morning Pacific time. 
The Vikings moving up to four with the Arizona Cardinals to get J.J. McCarthy. Uh, and then, not only just that, but the New York Jets then taking advantage of Marvin Harrison Jr. not going to fourth overall and moving up to five with the L.A. Chargers uh, to go down to 10. And they uh, come up. So you get two trades in the top five. And so quarterbacks go one, two, three, four. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. going five. I mean, Sam, this is uh, really interesting with what uh, Daniel Jeremiah is doing this. And Daniel Jeremiah is, I don't think, just doing this for his entertainment purposes to say, hmm, how can I make the NFL draft world burn today? Let's just have two trades in the top five. I think there's something where there's smoke around the Arizona Cardinals. And from somebody that I know who covers the Cardinals, this is something that since the NFL Combine, the Cardinals are keeping their ears open and saying, hey, yeah, we can trade back. Absolutely. Uh, with Marvin Harrison Jr., for whatever reason, is not exactly the slam dunk selection at four to Arizona. So uh, what was your reaction when you saw this uh, from Daniel Jeremiah? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense with the Cardinals. Not that I would do that if I was the Cardinals or say that that move makes sense, but I certainly think it's on brand. I mean, this is a team that just last year was the hype of all tradeback discussions in the NFL, and they opted to not take a Will Anderson that was sitting in the palm of their hand. They instead traded out from the third overall pick with the Houston Texans to then trade up to come and get Paris Johnson and get an offensive lineman that they might have just been able to take at three, that they might have been able to get had they waited a couple more picks. Monty Fort and the Cardinals brass have been very aggressive at moving around in the first round. Um, and so I wouldn't necessarily be surprised. Maybe they look at these wide receivers and say, yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. is our wide receiver one, but there's not a huge gap here between him and those next guys. Maybe they look at their needs and say wide receiver is not the most pressing need. I'll remind you, Austin, that that scenario Daniel Jeremiah paints right there has quarterback, 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 wide receiver at five. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't had an offensive tackle go off the board at six overall. You have two more top wide receivers still to go off the board. Yep. You have a game-changing tight end in Brock Bowers that a lot of people believe is, is the best tight end prospect to come out in a very long time. You look at all of that, and maybe the Cardinals are sitting there saying, we can trade back, get a ton. Maybe you get a few. You probably get a future one or at least a second first rounder in this year's draft to move back to 11, and you could get like the first or second best defensive player in the draft at number 11 like that there is scenarios here where that's a really good move for the Arizona Cardinals so it doesn't surprise me and I do expect the draft to have an unforeseen trade like this I think this early there's a lot of consensus right about like all right well this team's a trade-up candidate this team's a trade-up candidate this team could take this or that and I, it never really goes that way. There's going to be something that shakes up this first round that people aren't even thinking of yet. And maybe it is a scenario like this where McCarthy goes as early as four and like the Jets end up with Marvin Harrison Jr. Who knows? Yeah. So what does that mean for the Titans? I think that's the interesting thing. What does this trade scenario of two trades in the top five really mean for the Tennessee Titans? I think that's what we're going to get to uh, next, but first, I got to tell you guys what Sam and I did yesterday, and that was hanging out at Prince's Hot Chicken at the Tanger Outlets in Nashville. One, the Tanger Outlets in Nashville was pretty sick. That was my first time out there. That was Sam's first time going out there. The campus of Tanger Outlets Nashville is very impressive, right off of I-24 uh, in Cane Ridge, uh, and they can really uh, make a difference uh, for you. So they've got up to 70% off of your best brands all the time. It is a brand new shopping destination in Nashville. And Prince's Hot Chicken has that new location. It just opened in October. It's clean. It's phenomenal. It's big. And they got TVs, which means you can go watch all the college basketball over the next month at Prince's Hot Chicken at the Tanger Outlet. So you got multiple things. You can go watch basketball at Prince's. You can shop in between. You can do the best of both worlds. Uh, it's pretty sweet out there. And they've got a deal going on all March long 
which is 10 winglets, your choice of heat, fries, and a drink for just $17.50 at Prince's Hot Chicken at the Tanger Outlets in Nashville. And they're a great sponsor of our A to Z Bracket Challenge. So that Bracket Challenge link is right there in the description on Facebook and YouTube uh, for you to go check out. Uh, you still got a little day and a half to get into that. So go check that out. And gift cards will be won by local winners to both Prince's and the Tanger Outlets in Nashville on top of the grand prize being a big screen TV for the overall winner. So check them out. Prince's Hot Chicken at the Tanger Outlets in Nashville for that. So Sam, we've talked through chaos at the top. JJ McCarthy fourth to the Vikings who come up from 11th overall. Then the Jets come up from 10th overall to get Marvin Harrison Jr. at five. What does this mean for the Tennessee Titans at number seven? Because you go into it with two wide receivers and Joe Alt. You're going to have at least two of those players on the board. And the New York Giants are right ahead of you at sixth. They've already spent money on... Daniel Jones, they need to make sure Daniel Jones is uh, has all he needs to succeed. So here's what Daniel and Jeremiah had six and seven playing out as. That would be the Giants taking Malik Neighbors wide receiver out of, out of LSU. Uh, he does that. I wouldn't rule out the Giants trading up for a quarterback this year. If they stick and pick at six, adding Neighbors playmaking ability would be a good move. Well, with four quarterbacks in the top four picks, there's no quarterback for the Giants to take there which leaves Joe Alt from Notre Dame, the left tackle, right there from the Titans. Uh, the experiment with Andre Dillard did not work out last season. So they select Alt to be a staple at left tackle for the next decade. So before we dive into our question to see what everybody else thinks, Sam, how do you feel about Daniel Jeremiah's uh, selections right here for the sixth and the seventh pick to Giants and Titans after the two trades at four and five? Well, I think he's got the Giants right uh, in that spot. I, I've been told by everybody I've talked to uh, with knowledge of the situation in a lot of these front offices that if the Giants were to stick and pick at six, it's going to be a wide receiver coming off the board. That seems to be the consensus. Um, and so if you're a Titans fan, expect one of those wide receivers to come off the board right in front of your Titans. Um, if, if this thing plays out very chalk right and there are no big trades that we mentioned there's a world where there's no wide receivers on the board for the titans yeah. at seven there's a world where harrison goes four i think the chargers are a team that is likely to take a receiver without keenan allen or mike williams at right five, now right at yeah, five. five and then the giants at six like you could go qb 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 wide receiver wide receiver wide receiver you have a pick of offensive tackle one, but less wide receiver options to choose from. But I do think receiver at six makes sense for the Giants. It puts the Titans in an interesting spot because, yes, Joe Alt is right there. There are plenty of other offensive tackle options. There's one more wide receiver in Roma Dunze still on the board that the Titans could pick. And then there's teams that perhaps are interested in trading up. And so it gives you a lot of uh possibilities if you're the titans not a bad spot to be in um i personally would hope that malik neighbor sticks and gets there to seven but if he's not there you have to react yeah so we're sitting here discussing the titans opportunities at seventh overall knowing that four quarterbacks and two wide receivers are in the top six picks and the titans are sitting there looking at joe alt or the remaining wide receiver. And in this situation, that remaining wide receiver is Roma Dunze uh, uh, from Washington. So I'm just going to read through Daniel Jeremiah's remaining, how this kind of plays out behind the Titans pick with Joe Alt at seven, because we've got obviously Joe Alt going seven after neighbors at six right there. So the Atlanta Falcons at eighth overall would then take Dallas Turner, the first and likely top, uh, defensive player on the board, the edge rusher from Bama at eight. They have Kirk Cousins. They don't necessarily need a quarterback there. Then the Bears are back on the board at nine. They take Roma Dunze, wide receiver from Washington. The Chargers, who traded back from five to ten, now take Talisi Fuaga, who is a, a projected right tackle to go along with uh, Slater as their left tackle. So that makes sense 
with what the Chargers would do. Now, they're still super thin at the wide receiver position, but uh, you would think the Chargers are going to add more picks from that Jets trade to get a wide receiver deeper in the draft. And then 11 is where the Cardinals are at after trading back to 11 from four, passing on Marvin Harrison Jr., and they get at 11th overall, Jared Verse, the second defensive player, the second edge rusher out of Florida State. So that's how that plays out. You know, so that's the top 11. Brock Bowers goes 12 to the Broncos. So, and then Michael Penix Jr. goes 13 to the Raiders. Wow. Uh, just to keep Ooh. that in mind with Daniel Jeremiah. So there's five quarterbacks. That's bad. Five quarterbacks, three wide receivers, and a tight end in the top 13. That's good, a lot. That's good a draft lot to of, need uh, defense and not be picking in the top. Yes. So, again, that is uh, kind of how Daniel Jeremiah lays it out there. So, I think where we want to get to with you guys is going back to the Titan scenario that if there's a bunch of trades early on in this draft and the Titans are sitting there with the third wide receiver in this opportunity, it's Roma Dunze or Joe Alt. So, that's the question we're going to pose to the audience right now. With four quarterbacks and two wide receivers drafted before the Titans, what should the Titans do at seven? The remaining wide receiver, or should they go with Joe Alt, the number one overall tackle and offensive lineman or, on the board? Or allow me to offer the trade back scenario okay. as well. You want to throw I'll, a trade back in there? Yeah, I'll I'll offer that scenario as well to Titans fans. If if the options were a Dunze Alt or trade back from seven. What should the Titans do? That's the question this morning. All right. That's fine. We'll we'll add trade back into that scenario. So get your uh, comments in there. The remaining wide receiver, Joe Alt, or trade back. We need more likes in the show. So if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, uh, hit that like button, please. We need more likes on the show. We'll get to all of your answers about this uh, hypothetical here for the draft. But first, Farm Bureau Health Plans is where you should turn for your health coverage Plan on Farm Bureau Health Plans for your health, your dental, your vision, all of it. Just a couple pieces of what you need to supplement some other health coverage you might have. Farm Bureau Health Plans has been serving Tennesseans across the entire state for over 75 years. And so much has changed across the state, but Farm Bureau Health Plans has remained consistent in their investment in serving their community and serving you as a Tennessean. So Farm Bureau Health Plans of Tennessee is where you should go. Maybe you're, you're young, right? Maybe you're trying to, you know, you're getting kicked off your parents' coverage here in the next couple of years. You need to find the option that's right for you. Farm Bureau Health Plans is putting extra resources into helping the young adults enter that part of their lives. It can be overwhelming. It can be complicated with coming to health coverage for what you need. Maybe you have a growing family. That's where Farm Bureau Health Plans can help you out as well. All different stages of life, all different situations. Farm Bureau Health Plans customizes that for you. And you can get a quote and take a quick health assessment for that quote by visiting fbhp.com. Today's show is powered by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. It's March, guys. We all know what time it is. We all know what we're going to be doing throughout like the next three, four days here. It's college basketball time. It's time to sit down and watch college basketball, and you can get in on the action of the NCAA tournament with the bonus code ATOZ Sports on betmgm.com. Get up to $1,500 back in the form of a bonus bet if your first bet doesn't win when you use that bonus code. It's ATOZ Sports on the BetMGM app. And even if your first bet loses, you get a second uh, opportunity to win. That money goes back into your account, form of a bonus bet, so you can win big with a second chance. That's the best way to do March. So for this tournament, get with the king of sportsbooks and BetMGM.com. All right, so we've gone through the scenario. I'll kind of reset for anybody who jumped in. Uh, new Daniel Jeremiah's new mock draft that came out from NFL Network on Tuesday has two trades in the top five. Uh, quarterbacks go one, two, three, four, with J.J. McCarthy going fourth to the Vikings who use their new draft picks, uh, 23rd overall uh, and 11, to go up with the Cardinals to get J.J. McCarthy at four. The Jets scoop Marvin Harrison Jr., who did not go forward to the Cardinals at five. And then we have uh, the Giants getting Malik Neighbors at six. And Daniel Jeremiah has Joe Alt at seven for the Tennessee Titans. But where we want to get to with this hypothetical, four quarterbacks, two wide receivers in the top six picks. 
That means the Titans have three really good options. Yeah. Either the wide receiver three, Roma Dunze, who I think a lot of people think is a dude. Joe Alt, who is the best offensive lineman and potentially a decade-long solution at left tackle, if all goes right. But nobody can truly say they're a decade-long solution. Uh, Andrew Luck was a generational quarterback for a decade, and he didn't last that long. Things happen, right? And then Sam throws in the third option of trading back. So there's a lot of comments. I think over 150 comments since we asked the question. So uh, I will, uh, Sam, uh, send you to the chat. Is it the remaining wide receiver, Joe Alt, or trade back? I'm also going to put up a poll on uh, YouTube chat. Yeah, that might be the best way of doing this in general. Uh, yes. I do see a lot of Joe Alt from Jason and Scott early. Devin says uh, Brock Bowers, which uh, I would trade back before I took Brock Bowers at seven. I think when you look at the way that that draft falls, you could probably trade back to 10 or 11 and get Brock Bowers if you wanted to. Uh, tackle, tackle, alt, 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 uh, alt, no question. Wide receivers are deep, says Eric. Joe Alt for sure. Uh, I see mainly Joe Alt uh, from Billy, from Paul, from Jared. Darren says alter neighbors. It was never anything different. Joe Alt, offensive tackle, Joe Alt. Yuri says go left tackle. Galen says Joe Alt. Uh, I see a trade back here. Trade back is the best move. Trade back for Bowers is what Devin says now, which I think, yeah, would be uh, another smart option. Uh, Adunze, alt, alt, trade back to 11 and 23. Here's a news flash to everybody out there. This was Austin's ideal scenario. You're not getting 11 and 23 for the seventh overall pick. The, the Titans would have to give back to Minnesota in, this, in that situation. And I, I don't know what the... Look, I, I, I know this. I know that the Vikings are in a very desperate situation. So you can take advantage of people that are in desperate situations. We see that all the time in the world. I don't know but how desperate they are, though, because, again, I they keep just coming traded back. up to 23 sure. overall. Sure. Uh, to, but, make, but to gain extra ammo. As like, far as, moves, as, far as moving up. Yes, but as far as trading up into the top 10. We've looked at this before. The Jets aren't taking a quarterback. The Bears are not taking a quarterback. The uh, Falcons at eight are not taking a quarterback. Unless yes. you have a legitimate fear of the New York Giants taking a quarterback at six, which is possible, but trading up to seven doesn't help you jump the Giants at six. Like I think you either need yeah. to come up to number four as Daniel Jeremiah projects here, as you make a drastic jump up in the draft, I don't think there, there's any real reason where it benefits the Vikings to go from 11 to 7 and give up an additional first rounder for it. What, what, what it would be is the, the Titans would have to, and this is Rank Carthon, and if you remember uh, when Buck reported uh, after the Mike Vrabel firing that Buck had heard uh, that uh, from his sources are in the league that Rand Carthon is a master politician, right? The guy knows people. And the guy knows how to talk. And sure. that's a great thing to have him if he's on your team. <laughs> you know, it's it's tough to, to fight against, but if he's on your team, it's great to have Rand Carthon in your corner, uh, you know, pulling some puppeteering strings. So in this situation that we're talking about of trading back from seven, you got to look at what is Rand Carthon's sales pitch to the, to the Minnesota Vikings to go up four spots, 11 to seven. It's the fact that the Raiders are trying to come get that pick ahead of the Vikings. Cause you get the Raiders and the Broncos at 12 and 13 directly behind the Vikings at 11. So those two teams who are quarterback needy have the need to get ahead uh, of the Vikings potentially. And then, so you have to be able to convince uh, the Vikings that that's, that's who's going to come get their guy before you. If the Cardinals don't want to move. But it seems sure I, it I, seems I, heard, I literally heard yesterday. I literally heard yesterday afternoon that the Cardinals are very much in the trade back market. And so I don't even know if if the if the Titans are in the spot where they could take advantage of this. Yeah. Like if the Titans I, are trading back, it's not for JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy is gonna be gone. I agree. That's and that's kind of my point with that eleven for seven type of trade back is that it's not going to be somebody like the trade back scenario that comes to mind for me, right. In this specific spot is a team like 
Chicago wants that wide receiver in Roma Dunze, potentially that third wide receiver. They're just two spots later at nine, but I think there's a chance Atlanta takes one. So maybe it is that Chicago, maybe it's one of those teams in that 10 to 12 range that want that third wide receiver that are then like, let's go get seven. Maybe it's a team who wants that offensive tackle one and thinks Joe Alt is a big difference from those second tier guys. And they want to come up to seven to come and get that guy. Now, if you're the Titans, you could potentially, here's a dream scenario right here. You want to talk dream scenario? It's that yeah. this plays out. You're at seven. You move back to nine so that the Bears can jump Atlanta, take Roma Dunze. Atlanta still goes defense, and you get Joe Alt at nine, adding draft capital in the process by moving back with the Bears. That would be awesome. But, like, you know, you need a lot to go right, of course. I just don't see a world where a team is coming up to get J.J. McCarthy at seven right now, given – how much smoke there is around somebody trading out of that top group in front of them and how little threat there is of the teams right behind them taking a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that's just no, my thought on that. I, Anyways, I think go back, the, yeah, yeah. back to the chat to see, and I'll update the uh, poll here in a second, but head back to the chat to see what everybody's saying. Have you not posted the poll yet? Cause we need I have the posted the poll. I, I just want the poll to gain on the YouTube chat poll to gain some more. Well, we need uh, people results. commenting. I, I, I there are too many comments to read all of them right now, but Joe Alt is the overwhelming answer. I do see like a stick and pick Brock Bowers here, but Joe Alt, uh, Caleb's not sold on a Dunze, seems to be the answer from Titans fans. So I'm interested in seeing what the ratio is on the YouTube poll. All right. So the YouTube poll, the results that we have right now. Uh, with four quarterbacks and two wide receivers drafted before the Titans, what should the Titans do at seven? We've got the remaining wide receiver, which would be Roma Dunze and Daniel Jeremiah's uh, uh, hypothetical at 16% for the remaining wide receiver. Joe Alt is 69% of the votes and trade back is 15%. So almost the same amount of people are saying trade back Oh, well, here we go. 70% for Joe Alt. It's live moving right now. We had another Joe Alt vote come in and remaining wide receivers at 16 and trade back is at 14 with Joe Alt at 70%. So look, there's a lot of people that just say, look, take it how it comes. It's Joe Alt. It's Joe Alt. I'm good with Joe Alt at seven. If that's how the board goes, but man, I think, um, and you know, Bork says good job, everyone with the 69%. Well, one of you guys ruined it. If you wanted to go with that, one of you guys ruined it. It's now at 70. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sam, I want you to answer the question first, because I, I have an opinion on something that I have heard within the last since something that I've heard since free agency opened of what I think the Titans will do, but I would like to hear what your, your answer here is between Joe Alt, Roma Dunze, or trade back. And the trade back thing is, you know, it's easy to say trade back, but we have to, as we've talked through, like what's the, where are you right. going? How like, far how back are you, are you going? going? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a really difficult question for me. This is a really hard spot because, so I would say swap out these wide receivers and it's easy. Swap out these wide receivers, and I am running in the Malik Neighbors card to the podium without a question. Yeah, I think I, I value Neighbors ahead of a Dunze slightly, a and so I think that's the difference to me. Where now you start to be like, "Ooh, I don't know though," because I never really thought Joe Walt would be there at seven, and this makes me raise questions about what you do and obviously free agency has now happened and you've added Calvin Ridley to this offense and there hasn't been much at offensive tackle and it makes you rethink things a little bit but I'm going to stick to my guns mm -hmm. and I'm going to say Roma Dunze is who I would select at seven I know that's not popular I know it's easy to look at need and point to left tackle I believe in the depth of this draft class at offensive tackle. And I'm going to stick to that. I think Roma Dunze is a guy. I think Roma Dunze is a playmaker. I think 
DeAndre Hopkins probably only has one year left in Tennessee, looking at things realistically here. And you are going to be in the same spot next year, looking and saying, who's the running mate with Calvin Ridley? Yep. Who is the dancing partner for Calvin Ridley? Needing, a, an ideally, a long-term fix because you're not going to want to spend big in free agency again on another top wide receiver. So I think you're in a spot here where there are three dudes in this class, similar to how we saw like the, uh, who is the third guy? It was Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and uh, oh, there were three guys what? at the top of the draft at one year recently. Was that the Drake London draft? Yeah, London, London, Wilson, and Olave, where you felt good that all three of those guys were going to be good NFL wide receivers. So far, all of them, I mean, some have been better than others, but they've all been. Well, Drake London good. has nobody throwing to him up now. Sure, until now. And, and, yeah. and Garrett Wilson at times has not either and still been good with like right. a horrible quarterback situation. I think this is very similar, and I think I'm going to stick to it. Take Rome, add, go, it, go in with a wide receiver core of DeAndre Hopkins, Roma Dunze, and Calvin Ridley with – a guy in Calvin Ridley who can be very versatile and line up anywhere. Get yourself a Traylon Burks as the four kind of playing in a specific role where he runs some deep routes and needs to work on his play strength. He has to earn every opportunity he gets from yeah. now on. NWI is your five. That's an awesome wide receiving core. And even if D-Hop walks next year, I think you still have a dynamic duo in a Dunze and Ridley for Will Levis. That is my answer. It's a hard answer, but yeah. I think you can, that that jumps out to me more than Joe Alt at left tackle. All right. I have a follow-up question um, that I think is interesting. So, with Neighbors and Adunze, who do you think is the better pairing to replace DeAndre Hopkins alongside Calvin Ridley? I think... Roma Dunze is a more similar receiver to DeAndre Hopkins. Uh huh. Um, I think either one can work. Probably. I agree with you. I think I, I asked one can the work. question with my opinion being, being Roma Dunze is more like DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Than he is like Calvin Ridley. And here's I, a. Totally. Excuse, here's the other thing that. too. I think this is important because the, well, I'll save that because I'll get to what I said about, I, I heard something last week after the Calvin Ridley signing that made me go, Oh, okay. Here, what does that mean? So I'll, I'll get to that when it comes to uh, the topic here of the wide receiver. Uh, so, uh, but uh, Sam, go ahead and tell us all um, about our great friends at the bone and joint Institute. The Bone and Joint Institute, they're the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Whenever you get hurt in life, you have to know who to trust and you can't fumble on your recovery. So don't fumble. Go to the Bone and Joint Institute and their state-of-the-art rehab facility located in Franklin right off the highway. It's a one-stop shop for all of your needs. So you don't have to drive everywhere in Middle Tennessee to get to different appointments and go to, uh, you know, go to the clinic over here, go get a test done over here. It's all there. Clinic, rehab, imaging, surgery, testing, same spot in Franklin, great facility, great doctors, great care. Schedule an appointment with our friends at the Bone and Joint Institute at boneandjointtn.org. And with BetMGM, you can always win big with our first bet offer. Sign up with the BetMGM app and use our bonus code ATOZ Sports to get up to $1,500 back in bonus bets. But existing users, there's nothing in sports quite like March matchups. That's why BetMGM is dropping a bet and get tokens into the account of customers in Tennessee. I used mine this morning. You simply add a wager to March matchups uh, to your bet slip, activate your token, and you'll instantly receive a bonus bet no matter how your wager goes. That's exactly what I did. I, I made a, I placed a bet uh, on games that start tonight and tomorrow, and I instantly got a $10 uh, bonus bet for my uh, for my uses there, and then I threw it on a future bet, right? That's how I decided to use it. So you can do that in Tennessee with BetMGM's March Madness bet and get tokens into your account. So you add a March matchups bet to your slip, you place that, 
And then instantly I got a $10 bonus point bet. You can do the same uh, to use on March matchups only at BetMG and the King of Sportsbooks. BetMG and Game Sense remind you to play responsibly. See BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, Tissy only news, new and existing customer offer. All promotions, subject qualification, and eligible requirements. Rewards issued and eligible bonus bets that expire in seven days. And for problem game with sport, call Tennessee Redline 800 889 9789. So, Sam, we're going through the hypothetical of all right, the Titans have Joe Walt. Aroma Dunze on the board. What's the move here? After the Calvin Ridley signing last week, I heard that the Titans still prefer to take a wide receiver at seven over an offensive lineman at seven. Yep. And if the wide receiver that they want is there at seven, they're going to take that. If they don't have any of the wide receivers available, and I don't know how they like neighbors versus Dunze versus Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm I not, have heard uh, Something like I, I don't. I don't. I have not heard that. Uh, if you want to disclose how you've or what you've heard about how they feel about those two guys differently, then you can. But I, I have heard that wide receiver is still a priority as of right now at seventh overall, if they're there. And here's why I think that's the case. DeAndre Hopkins has one year left on his deal. You just signed Calvin Ridley to a four-year contract, but Calvin Ridley is – 29 for most of the year. He'll turn 30 in December. He says he's 25 uh, in real life. He's 29 on paper, all that stuff, right? The Titans have a, an easier way to get out of that Calvin Ridley deal after two years if they want, because then he would be 31 turning 32 in that situation or 32 turning 33 towards the end of that deal. And now all of a sudden, by the time Will Levis is getting a second contract, you've got DeAndre Hopkins gone and Calvin Ridley about to be gone. Now what? So if you want to have the wide receiver to go with Will Levis in this hypothetical situation, then you can draft them now and line them up like Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. You line them up to maximize each other while they're both cheap and then pay them once it all works out. So that is my thought on the Titans still prefer wide receiver at seven if the guy's on the board. So Sam, what are you hearing about who they covet uh, between the different three guys. Well, top tier says they should take any of the top three wide receivers in the draft. And so Austin, yeah, it was a difficult question, but that has been my stance since the senior bowl. That has been my stance through the combine. And that is going to be my stance now. Uh, and that's going to be my stance through the draft. So while there are preferences for the Titans, which I will get into, uh, I do believe all three of these guys are legitimate good, talented, impactful wide receivers that if the Titans have an opportunity to draft one of them, which it sounds like they will, because if four quarterbacks go in the top six, the Titans are going to have their pick of a wide receiver. Uh, they will have that opportunity. I think that is where they should go. We can get into the reasons why in a moment. I think from what I understand, the ideal world for the Tennessee Titans is that Malik neighbors is still there at seven. I think that is their ideal scenario at seven overall. Um, do I believe they would still go with Roma Dunze if it was him versus Joe Alt? I'm not sure. Uh, I do trust that, you know, wide receiver is absolutely not off the table. Pass catcher in general, not off the table. I wouldn't rule out a Brock Bowers. I think the Titans are though, to your point, still looking to add weapons and depth at some of these, uh, you know, pass catching positions for mm -hmm. Will Levis and for the future of Will Levis and not just in 2024. So I believe uh, Malik Neighbors is preferred over Roma Dunze for the Titans. Um, that said, if, if we expect two of them to be gone by the times the Titans pick, they might not have a choice. Yeah. And I, I think I prefer Malik Neighbors to Roma Dunze, but that doesn't mean I don't like Roma Dunze. So like, if I if I were the Titans, I think Roma Dunze is the pick at seven yeah. instead of Dewalt. Yeah. So I, I I kind of agree. I think um, I think they're all they're different and yet all probably impactful in their own way. Uh, you know, I kind of went back and forth for a while. Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze? I have to say. Roma Dunze's personality alone gave him a lot of bonus points for me. Just being like, dude, this is an awesome guy that I like talking to and having him in a Titans uniform would be great because uh, he would be a lot of fun to, to, you know, 
swap stories with in the locker room and such. Uh, but, you know, Malik Neighbors is dangerous and explosive and uh, really a, a, an offense changer. So I think I give the edge to Malik Neighbors as well. Um, I know some teams they have Malik Neighbors as their wide receiver one. So if the Titans are able to get him at seventh overall, that that's a great option as well. Mm -hmm. Austin, I think the other wrinkle of this that has so far gone un, untalked about by us uh, is the depth at offensive tackle. And yet the thing that keeps getting brought up by every free agent, every coach, everybody within the Titans organization, every chance they get to a microphone, which is, hey, how about Bill Callahan? Which is, hey, how about this guy's attention to detail? How about this guy's ability to bring out the best in the offensive lineman that he works with? We heard Rand Carthon rave about him at the NFL Combine saying, he just put on a clinic with his film study. The attention to detail is crazy. We heard Brian Callahan talk about his father and say, yeah, he's the best in the business. He has been for a very long time. We heard Lloyd Cushenberry get to the podium and say, main reason why I came to Tennessee, Bill Callahan, because I've talked to other players and they know that this guy makes them better. And I think that that could potentially be a factor in this Titans draft strategy as well is could they take the left mm -hmm. tackle at 38 and feel good that that guy can be a starter for them? Could they take a right tackle in the fourth round and feel good that that guy could be a starter for him? Or as you and I talked about on Titans at two yesterday that I would recommend mm -hmm. people go check out, yeah. you have a guy in Sadiq Charles that you just signed for one year and, and limited money. I don't even know what the exact terms of that contract were. But you have a Sadiq Charles. You have a Daniel Brunskill. You now have Lloyd Cushenberry. You have Peter Skaronsky. They're signing some of these guys for a reason, and especially with a Sadiq Charles, I would imagine is somebody that Bill Callahan sees something in that he feels like he can develop either as a depth piece or a swing tackle, swing guard that can uh, play both sides of the ball here. But how is the Titans' confidence in Bill Callahan to coach up a starting five uh, impact their selection at seven? I think it's even more of a case for them to take the wide receiver. All right, so we are aligned on that. Uh, I know Zach is not. I'm sure we will have some uh, conversations throughout with the draft. We've got, what, five weeks until the draft? Crazy uh, how fast it's moving. Yes, five weeks. And this you know, the last five weeks are going to be uh fairly uh insane uh with that going on. So all right, so Sam, let's go ahead and get to some super chat conversations because we've got a lot um of super chats here uh to talk about. But guess who's back? Factor's back. We talked about factor a lot in the month of February, and they're back uh, again because uh they make our draft process easier. Uh, factor meals, they are fresh, nutritious, and satisfying. Uh, factor sent us uh, some free meals before we started talking about them uh, last month. I loved them and so much that I took advantage of this deal uh, after I got my comp meals uh, for doing the reads. And so uh, I, I, I believe in it. I, I got the 50% off. So what you can do is you go to uh, factor.com. That's factormeals.com slash ATOZ50. Use code ATOZ50 and get 50% off your first order. I did it already. Crazy it's deal. worth it. And they delivered <laughs> yesterday. So I'm uh, pumped about that. Uh, it's going to make life easier while I'm out of town for my wife. It's going to make life easier when I get back in town on Sunday night and don't have grocery uh, ready for me to go on Monday. So factormeals.com slash ATOZ50 to get 50% off your first order order when you use code ATOZ50. They're ready in either two minutes in the microwave or nine minutes in the oven. And it's nutritious. It tastes great compared to all the other things that I've tried when it comes to meal kits. So factormeals.com slash ATOZ50 with code ATOZ50 and you get 50% off that first order. So check it out right there. I will post the link uh, right here in the chat uh, momentarily. So get ready for that. Uh, but factormeals.com slash ATOZ50 to get 50% off. Austin, you are going to be eating your factor meals, and they came at the perfect time because uh, I'd imagine you, like most people, not going to be leaving the house a whole bunch the la next nope. couple of days here. Uh, well, I guess you will be leaving the house because you are <laughs> going uh, to watch some college basketball in person. 
But people like myself are going to be locked up in the apartment with a television screen in view at all times that has college basketball going. So having factor meals on hand, huge factor there. And having BetMGM pulled up on my phone going to be a huge factor for me. I'm going to use the bonus code ATOZ Sports and uh, bet with BetMGM on the NCAA tournament to all of the games that are going on. I'm going to be getting in on the action because with the king of sports books, you can get up to $1,500 back in bonus bets. So if you have a big play that you're liking, like if uh, you're riding with the Tennessee Volunteers against St. Peter's in the first round, or uh, if you just want to bet the Tennessee Volunteers to win their region and go to the final four, do it with BetMGM. Use the bonus code ATOZ Sports. And then when the Tennessee Volunteers inevitably get bounced in the second round, you will get up to $1,500 back into your account in the form of a bonus bet if that bet doesn't win. It, best way to do sports betting is when the risk is limited and when you can lose a bet and say, okay. We got another shot at it. We got another chance to win here. So get with BetMGM and BetMGM.com for March. All right. Uh, Devin's comment is not a super chat, but it's super good. I use y'all's code, Mission Accomplished. So factormeals.com slash ATOZ uh, to get that, take advantage of that 50% off uh, your order. It's a great deal. Um, again, I, I got them for free earlier, and I was like, yeah, that was, that was really good. So let's go do this then. All right, super chats. Uh, here on the show, um, uh, let's see. I'm going to get to some that are more on on topic here. Um, Nathaniel says, "Any interest in J.C. Latham on a trade back? Not for me. No, nope. I, I don't think J.C. <laughs> Latham is a fit with what Brian Callahan wants his offensive tackles to be. He's a he is more of a Mike Vrabel." Uh, offensive tackle, but I don't necessarily think he's a Brian Callahan off, off of the tackle. Yeah, I don't have a ton of interest there. Uh, I, he's probably not even one of my top three offensive tackles on, on the board. Uh, I, I would prefer Talese Fuaga over J.C. Latham. I would prefer Olu Fashnu over J.C. Latham. I would prefer Joe Alt over J.C. Latham. I might prefer J Troy Fautanu over J.C. Latham as well. So you'd have to be trading back quite a ways for me to be okay with them coming away with a right tackle, who's probably the offensive tackle five, uh, mm -hmm. that not a, not a ton of interest for me there. Uh, let's see. Um, a couple trade backs, uh, to go along with, uh, that about, uh, JC Latham Brandon super chat says, remember what Rand said to Ramon on one Oh four five quote, who's to say we don't show up on draft day with more picks. Look out for trades for picks on draft day. I mean, that's, Look, that's Rand speaking on both sides of the thing. That's the master politician that Rand Carthon seems to be. You know, he should say those things because yeah. you want to be able to, after the fact, look back and say, like, yeah, hey, see, well, remember I said this? Yeah, well, let's keep in mind, too, like the Titans don't have to trade back from seven to trade back and acquire more draft picks. Teams trade back in the second round, the fourth round, all the time. I mean, you look, the Titans traded up in the second round last year to go and get Will Levis in the 30s, um, perhaps there's a spot for them to do the opposite. And maybe you move yeah. back from 38 to 45 and you add a third or a fourth round pick to do so, right? There are other opportunities to add draft capital that don't necessarily involve not picking at seven. You could do both. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, King VC comes in and says, do the fact that uh, the Titans have the, an O-line guru in Bill Callahan. I think you draft an off of the tackle in the second round. I think you go after Rome in this situation, yeah. which is what Sam and I both He really was on the Bill Callahan with. point before I was. Yep, yep. King VC all over that one. And then Andre says, uh, defenses don't game plan for tackles. Get the game-breaking playmaker. Get your own version of Chase slash Jefferson. Those feel-good wins could be biting us if you miss out. Those feel good wins could be by. I don't understand the feel that last part of it, but I, I get like what you're saying. Like, do defenses game plan for tackles? I mean, no, not not really. But no, like, I mean, th this is another way of saying what Brian Callahan says. I want the guy that scores the touchdown. Um, and yeah, defenses have to walk into a stadium and say, "Where's Malik Neighbors lining up? Where's Malik Neighbors running?" How do we contain Ridley Hopkins, Malik Neighbors all at the same time? How do we contain 
Ridley Hopkins, Adunze all at the same time. How do we figure out what to do with Brock Bowers with our defense? Like this is a adding weapons is something defenses have to account for. And I think that is a, another way of viewing Brian Callahan's philosophy of, Hey, all things are kind of equal in terms of prospect level. The guy that scores the touchdowns is the guy who changes your offense a little bit more than the guy who blocks. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, Coach Zach Buckeye for life says, keep seeing Marv as wide receiver three on some big name list. If he is there at seven, along with Olu and Alt, who do you want? For me, it's 18 all day, every day. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen some people like say that Marvin Harrison Jr. has been dropping. I, I think the Titans would love for Marvin Harrison Jr. to drop a seven. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I still think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be the first wide receiver taken after all of this smoke and deception and uh, back and forth. You know, maybe it's, I don't know. I, I don't know how you feel about this. Wide receiver three for Marv, I don't see it. I mean, I we'd be throwing a party. We were like the the A to Z Sports live show during the NFL draft would be off the rails, and I would be uh, telling Austin, "Hey, I gotta go because I gotta get to St. Thomas Sports Park to go and take videos and hoot and holler about the Titans drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. in the first round." That would be an unforeseen circumstance that. I think everybody in Titans Nation is happy with that. All of a sudden, everybody who's going, hey, Joe Walt, take Joe Walt, take the tackle, looks up and sees Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think everybody's like, okay, I'm okay with that one. That that one makes me feel pretty good. Right. All right. So, Sam, before we get to trivia. And, and real quick, ahead, because yeah. I've seen a couple people knocking me for this. The Bears are taking a quarterback at first overall, not at nine overall is what I'm saying, uh, which I've explained a couple times. The Bears have two picks in the top 10. Familiarize yourself with that top 10. Um, so I, I have not said the Bears. I said the Bears are not taking a quarterback, referring to the picks after the Titans, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, obviously, the Bears are taking context. Caleb Williams at first overall. So, yeah, please use context and, you know, think a little bit. That's, the, you that's the conversation that's being had. Yeah. Caleb Williams will be drafted, you know, two hours before <clears throat> that situation uh, yeah. on draft night. Uh, there was, a, there was another one that I meant that I wanted to see. Uh, oh, Todd says, Hey, A to Z, you guys watched the O line last year, right? You know, cause we're sitting here saying wide receiver at seven, if that's the case uh, over Joe. Alt. Yeah. I, I don't blame anybody that feels this way. I really get it. Like, like taking the left tackle, is smart like like you need it um you need an offensive line i don't blame anybody that feels that way i i think you have to try or at least what the titans are going to try and do is kill two birds with one stone here um in the sense of i saw the offensive line last year but i didn't see an offensive line coached by brian uh bill callahan that added a Lloyd Cushenberry, you know, got a second year improvement from Peter Skaronsky. Uh, I think you are okay. And I think that this is the overall thought process. The tackle you could get at 38 coached up by Bill Callahan in a, in a tackle class that has a lot of depth. I think you can come away feeling pretty good about, I think the drop off between a Malik neighbors and Roma Dunze and whatever wide receiver you're going to be sitting there with at 38 is pretty drastic. Yeah, and so, a... yeah, that, that's my thought process. But I, I understand why people would say, how the heck do you not take an offensive lineman? And I'm sure even if the Titans took a Roma Dunes or Malik neighbors, there would be people all over the place bashing them for what they're doing. But yeah. I think it can work. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get to sports trivia. But first, Krebs Kubota, they are where you should go for all of your equipment needs. An elite Kubota dealer with three great locations in Columbia, Franklin and Murfreesboro. They're online at KrebsKubota.com. They can truly take care of you uh, whenever you need that piece of equipment. An elite Kubota dealer means the best equipment in the industry and also means the best warranties in the industry. Plus, with the Krebs family name, you get the best customer service in the industry with Krebs Kubota. Check them out online at KrebsKubota.com. And it's time for Sports Trivia. And shout out to Wilson County Hyundai, wilsoncountyhyundai.com. Go make them a part of your new car buying process. See our guy Payne Bone in Lebanon or online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. Sam, are you ready for trivia? Let's go. 
All right, here we are uh, with our Wednesday sports trivia. Sam, the trivia master uh, here this week. We got nine topics. The rules go, I will select the first topic. Somebody in the chat will select the second topic. The first comment I see for the chat uh, will be that second uh, topic. Uh, and then, uh, as Lumen correctly says, do not Google. Do not do anything correct uh, like that that's going to have you cheat. My first topic will be television. I've already seen Jeff barely beat Devin for the second. Ooh. Devin right. the third topic. So television will start us off. Television. After some smaller roles, including an episode of Entourage, this Colombian actress had a breakout role playing Gloria Delgado Pritchett on Modern Family from 2009 to 2020. Uh, is this... Colombians is it Sofia Vergara? This this is I did not realize that she was an entourage. I did not realize that either. Uh, also, my bad if I just burned that before the chat had an opportunity to. to no, comment, I, but. I think uh, the chat was going to be all over that one. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm I was just proud of myself for getting that one because I have not seen either of those shows. But you know. really, you're not a Modern Family guy. I have not watched Modern, Modern Family. Family I, a good show. I think I would enjoy it. Uh, I just I've never really been a a huge sitcom in general type of person. I, I, I there are limited sitcoms that I have, have seen. Um, it's just uh, the sitcoms are, they, they fill a need, a void. It's a purpose that you can mindlessly watch something yeah. on streaming. When you're tired, you've had a long day. You don't want to mentally apply yourself into a show and they are 22 minute episodes. You fly through them. You can fall asleep during them and not miss anything important. That's kind of the, the purpose that they play. So sure. Jeff, Jeff was hand, second. Hand but, up. Lou man said, slow down, hand up. I will slow down. I was a yeah, little too quick on was, the trigger that one. Yeah, so a little bit. Yeah. Um, so Jeff was second or first on the next topic. So I will go Jeff's next and Devin was right behind him. So I'll give Devin the third topic, but snacks and candy is where we're going to go now. All right. Snacks and candy. With its name on the packaging, what Swiss chocolate company makes the Lindor truffle? Mm. Oh, man. Name My mother-in-law on... has these constantly. And I, it is. Let's see. We got, all right. So uh, here's the comments coming in here. You've got I'm pretty Lind sure Lind we got the, I, from I'm Alex. pretty sure that's it. Yeah. Lindor, Lindor, Lint, 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 Bolvia says DeMarco, Ferreira Roche says Corey. Um, Lint sounds Swiss. <laughs> so I believe that seems, that's correct. That is like, I don't think it's Cadbury. No, that doesn't that's sound. Different. Yeah, I, I believe Lint is correct. And as Jeff says, yeah, these are all over Italy. I just, I, I don't remember the packaging of some of these you can get them at like the gas stations and whatnot, but lint is correct. So good on the chat for that one. First to get it right. Alex. Yep. Good job, Alex. Good job, Alex. Uh, cars is what Devin wanted to go to. So cars. All right, here we go. Cars it introduced in 1994. The Avalon was a full size sedan model made by this automobile manufacturer, mm. but got discontinued in the United States in 2022. Avalon. I think I know it. I think I might be wrong. <laughs> so I agree with the chat. So I, the, the overwhelming chat answer is Toyota here. And Toyota yeah. Avalon is what was ringing true in my head. What was in your head? Uh, it's Chevrolet is what Chevy I Chevy Avalon. Yeah. I think Toyota sounds a little bit better. I think it was the, the why. I knew there was a why in the Avalon, like Toyota, Chevy. But I believe that, yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> Uh, good on chat, Bryce. I drive for a living. This is cake. There you go. So oh, yeah. Toyota. So he's all over all the car types. I'm not a car guy either. I know nothing about cars. Uh, all right. Um, I, you've had quite the week with your vehicle. Uh, I, I will go with music on our next topic. All right. Music Kiki. Do you love me? Are you writing? Say you'll never, ever leave from beside me. Cause I want you and I need you. Are lyrics from what 2018 Drake song? Do you know the song, Austin? The title of the song? Can it's you hear the audio? Oh, I can absolutely hear it. I, and we don't need to uh, uh, hear it. 
So you do know the song. I know the song, yeah, but do I know the song Drake. title? It says, it says Drake. We need the song title. I'm waiting for the first correct answer. Is it In My Feelings? Is that the title of the song? I believe it is In My Feelings. So let's see who got it. Uh, Supreme Nick. A lot of people. Uh, Jeff has got it. Jeff. Christophero. Uh, Darius had it with a question mark, but yeah, in Supreme my feelings, Nick, Nicholas, by, uh, Elizabeth Moreno got it in my feelings. I, in yeah. my feelings by Drake, uh, not a very good song, but popular on unfortunately TikTok. catchy is what I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> accurate. It had a okay. dance friend to it. So it's like all of a sudden you find yourself humming it like hours later. You're like, God damn it. Stop it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go with movies to create our little U shape. All right. Movies. Halle Berry won the Oscar for best actress in this 2001 romantic drama that also starred Billy Bob Thornton, Heath Ledger, and Sean Combs. Oh, man. Sean Combs. Side trivia. Who sings the song or who does the, who's the artist that does the song Halle Berry? Oh, I have no idea. No uh, clue on that one. Monsters Ball is Mon the Monsters guess. Ball. Uh, yeah, I'm not too familiar with this one. Uh, romantic drama, Monster Ball, Monsters Ball. I'm Monsters not sure Ball is what? Maybe it's a possessive Monsters Ball. Yeah, Monsters Ball. Uh, and my bonus was uh, correct answer is Hurricane Chris. Okay. The Halle Berry uh, song. Yeah, Vasco right. got it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm not sure I, what Monsters Ball could be about, but neither. That okay. sounds like a great cast. It does All sound right. like a good cast. Funny so, mashup. I wonder if Halle Berry is going to be in this one. All what? right, <laughs> I know. Both, I've got both of them immediately. Really? Uh, yes. Yes, I do have both of them. Oh. I uh, I am uh, I'm good at these celebrity mashups sometimes. Tommy I, Lee look Was it Tommy Lee Jones? No. Yeah, I think people are, I think she's suggesting Tommy Lee Jones, but the chat is on it. Uh the inside is Brian Cranston. Ah. Without the glasses, you're used to seeing Walter White. Uh, and ah. that is Brian Cranston without the glasses. And Jason Sudeikis. I yes. can see the Sudeikis outside. Yep, Matt's on it. Uh, yeah, so this is Ted Lasso and Walter White combined. Uh, I still have yet to watch the uh, either of those shows, honestly. Uh, I have seen all of Breaking Bad now, and it was worth it. I have not seen Ted Lasso, but... Jason Sudeikis. Is he with a Y? Is that is that? Well, yeah, you, you have two C's. I think he's I. Cranston. No, he's with oh, a Y. No, he's a Y, Brian. Brian. I didn't know that. Well, good for him. All right, uh, Major League Baseball. Let's do it. Bang. Playing alongside Joey Votto, this Reds right fielder totaled 233 home runs from 08 to 16, made three all-star teams, and was a silver slugger before getting traded to the Mets. Got it on lock. I'm sure you do. Red's right fielder in yes. that era. I have also, no clue. I mean, I'm going to know the, Oh, the he player. was the, he's the, the, yeah. Well, there's a Reds fan in the chat here and David Brown, but. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. David the, Brown all in it. A lot yeah. of, a lot of people all over this one. Jay this Bruce. Jay Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Jay, Jay Bruce, Bruce. Seattle Mariner, Jay Bruce, Cleveland Indian Jay Bruce. I don't know if they were the guardians yet at that point. Uh, one of my favorite MLB players for a period of time. And that Reds team was fun. They had Brandon Phillips and Zach Cozart, and they were a fun team, fun little squad. All shout right, Jay out, Bruce. Shout out to Jay Bruce, and shout out to Joey Votto, because he's still playing with NFL Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, oh, we're saving with, college basketball for the end. Look at you. It's March, right? Here we go. Thomas Jones is one of two RBs to break out for – 800 rushing yards on this 2010 AFC team that won 10 games and made the playoffs. Uh, mm. So after the Bears, where does Thomas Jones go? 
Uh, AFC? Kansas City? I think it might be the Jets. The, I have no recollection. Thomas of the, Jones so, on the Jets. I have no right. Re- everybody's on Jets, so we're going to go with the Jets. But I have no recollection of him on the Jets. I feel like that was like Mark Sanchez Jets. Uh, I think it's the Jets. Pretty sure. Uh, well, I'm going to ride with the chat. There's a couple people who said Kansas City, which was my first thought no, as well. It's not Kansas City. But the Jets... Oh, oh, chat was wrong. Okay, college basketball. Everyone said Jets. Everyone said Jets. And it's not the New York Jets. College basketball. Devin says, no, we weren't. We were not wrong. Devin. Devin was, Devin said KC. Devin said KC. That's what I said. That's what I, I said, know. Devin. Uh, Devin. Okay, I'm with college you. basketball. Let's get you were screaming Chiefs. College basketball. Let's. We'll come back to it. After beating Boise State in a 13 seed first four play in game, this Atlantic 10 school upset Kansas State in 12 seed Ole Miss to make it to the 2013 oh. Sweet 16. So a oh. 13 seed A10. Oh man. Uh, this is not the Bonnies. Is this? Like, uh, this isn't like a GW. This isn't like a George Mason. The Fordham. A-10. I mean, we're getting VCU. So Davidson. Davidson. It's not VCU. Richmond. Davidson. It could be, it could be Richmond. LaSalle. Yeah. Uh, let's see who else. Duquesne is in that conference. They obviously haven't yeah. made it in a while. Yeah, Duquesne. I my gut here, I kind of remember Davidson pulling a couple upsets as like a 13. FGCU is not yeah, but they, but they would the play so the A10 for those of you that don't uh like get into this too much. we our options here are LaSalle, Richmond, uh we've got VC Duquesne, now Loyola Chicago. They weren't in it back then. You've got George Mason. Fordham, VCU. Uh, well, Dayton. we got you know, Nick Dayton. says he's a Kansas State fan. Well, there we go. And so LaSalle. It's LaSalle. Okay, well, there was somebody else on LaSalle early, but yeah, good to have a Kansas State fan. Who knows it? There we go. Right. So Let's NFL, should we go with the Chiefs? Because that was my initial thing that I said where I felt like Thomas Jones went to the Chiefs after the Bears, and that's what Devin was saying as well. I mean, I don't know of another AFC team that would fit. Twenty. I didn't. I didn't. What the hell happened like, in twenty ten? The only thing that I thought about Thomas Jones was Bears to Chiefs. All right, let's go Chiefs then. There it is. Correct. All right. Wait, All right. no, no, we didn't get it right. No, it was correct. Oh. Nine correct, one okay, incorrect. It, the purple means we got it right on our second chance. Okay, I got you. So, all right. Damn well, it. All right. Well, that's what happens. That's what happens. Uh, Chad was, man, no problem. Chat was just so overwhelmingly in favor of Jets there that we just had to ride with it. So, yeah, that's okay. Well, hey, guess what? We're, uh, we're getting pretty close to being sold out here. We're getting pretty close to being sold out. So, shop.adzsportsnational.com is where to go to get our A to Z merch, the sooner uh, that we get rid of all this stuff, the sooner we get to add our new version of our merch, our A to Z merch 2.0. It's going to be buy better. It because I want the new stuff. That's the deal is just buy it. Cause I, I want to get the, some of the new, new pieces in. So everybody's got to sell it out here. There you go. So uh, still got sizes available. Still have hats uh, like Sam's rocking the hat right there. You can get that hat. It's still got the, the t-shirts, the long sleeves, the pullovers too. And uh, uh, yeah, so we are getting ready for some new merch and it's going to be more creatively set up uh, and not as, you know, simple as what we've got. But, you know, we're trying to get uh, rid of that stuff. So shop.a-to-z-sports-nash.com. Everything's already marked down 40% off trying to unload this stuff uh, here. So yeah, exactly, Jared. You're right. Buy our old stuff so we can get new, better stuff. It's exactly what it is. Um, so, uh, well, so Luman says the hats are sold out. The Nashville hats are sold out. 
but the ones that are just like oh, you have a Nashville. No, right? that's the Nashville one. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. But the the um the non uh Nashville, it's just blank A to Z sports. Those are still available. There's a few left uh, right there. So, all right, guys. That'll do it for us. Tons of content to come. Make sure uh, you hit that like button before you head out here on Facebook and YouTube. Please like the show. That always makes the show better for us. Buck Rising live tonight for A to Z Sports Primetime. On this Wednesday, I'm out of here. I'm done for the week. I'm going to Charlotte tomorrow morning for March Madness. And so Sam and Jack will carry you guys uh, tomorrow talking hey. more Titans rumors there. What's yeah, hey, Austin. Uh, hey, why why don't we both make it out of the first weekend? That's I mean that's my plan. Let's make it out of the first weekend. I, I will I will I will handshake because I've had this like rivalry going on with with you know Tennessee a little bit just baby rivalry with Tennessee. I will handshake Tennessee Illinois making it out of the first weekend. Let's uh let's there do that. Go. We'll we'll hope it all works out. All right, like the show before you go. Hit that like button, please. And uh, we'll catch you guys uh, throughout the rest of the week. Be safe. And uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. But Sam and Jack riding the show uh, tomorrow. Appreciate it as always.